Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about two different types of discontinuities. So a discontinuity is a number uh, where a function is not continuous. So for example, if you have 1 over x minus 2. So this function is not defined at 2, so x equals 2, this would be a discontinuity. So discontinuity. Okay. Uh, because if you plug in 2 on the bottom, you get 1 over 0, so the function is not defined, so it's not continuous. Another example would be something like uh, x plus 1 over x plus 1, uh, x minus 3. So this function has two places where it's not continuous, right? It's not continuous at uh, negative 1, right, because that makes the bottom 0, and also at 3, because that makes the bottom 0 as well. So both of these are discontinuities, so discontinuities. Okay, so in this video we want to talk about two special types of discontinuities. The first type is called a removable discontinuity, so removable. And the second type uh, is called a non-removable discontinuity, so non-removable discontinuity. We want to differentiate between the two. So basically, intuitively, uh, a removable discontinuity is a discontinuity that can be fixed. So you can take your function and you can make it continuous at that point by redefining it. So it's a, it's a discontinuity that can be fixed. A non-removable discontinuity, well, it's a discontinuity that you can't remove. You can't fix it. So if it's removable, you can remove it and fix it. So an example here is the example we already just saw. So f of x equals x plus 1, just so you understand the intuition, x plus 1, uh, x minus 3. So this, this function has um, two discontinuities. We talked about them. We know one of them is negative 1, because that makes the bottom 0. And the other one is 3. That may also makes the bottom 0. Well, check this out. We can cancel this. Um, and so when you cancel this, you're essentially removing the discontinuity. So boom, so now you get 1 over x minus 3. So this has been removed. So this is a removable discontinuity, right? And this one, you can't get rid of it, right? There is no way it's a non-removable discontinuity. So that's the, the intuition behind removable and non-removable discontinuities. Uh, removable discontinuities can be removed by canceling in this case. And non-removable discontinuities cannot be removed, right? This still doesn't make any sense. It's not defined, so it's not uh, continuous. So how do you find them uh, when you're doing problems? So first of all, let me give you a criteria which always works. Um, so here is the invincible uh, criteria. Um, so let's say that x equals c. Say this is a discontinuity. Discon continuity. Okay. And then let's say that we take the limit as x approaches c of f of x. So if this limit exists and is equal to, let's say, l, so l is a real number, so if this exists, then x equals c is removable. Okay, so if this limit exists, so if you take the limit and you get a number, then you can remove the discontinuity, right? You can remove it. In this case here, in our, in our fake example up here, let's think about that. If we take the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x plus 1 over x plus 1, x minus 3, that's our f of x, our c is negative 1, right? And we're claiming that if the limit exists, then it's removable. Well, let's see. Well, what can you do? Oh, well, you can cancel. So we removed it, right, using our, our powers, our superpowers of mathematics and calculus. And now you can evaluate this limit, right? So you plug in negative 1, you drop the limit sign. So you get negative 1 minus 3. So you just get negative 1 over 4. So the limit exists because it's equal to a number. Therefore, it's removable, which we already knew via intuition because we canceled it and we removed it. Hence, it's a removable discontinuity. So this is a, a nice criteria. And it works both ways. If it's removable, the limit exists. Likewise, if the limit does not exist, it's not removable. So it does work both ways. However, in practice, 
uh, you, you don't use it too often. I mean, you do use it, and it does work both ways. So let me write it down a little more formally. We're going to say that this limit exists if and only if. So if and only if x equals c is removable. So this is something that we'll use uh, for the harder problems involving uh, removable and not removable discontinuities. So the limit will exist if and only if x equals c is removable. So what does that mean? That means if the limit exists, it's removable. If it's removable, the limit exists. It also goes both ways um, in the other way. So if the limit does not exist, it's non-removable. So not exist, non-removable. I won't write that down, but really, really useful. All right, so for all practical purposes, again, we typically avoid this. So let me just give you uh, two general rules that will help you do most of the problems. So typically we'll only use this when we have like some piecewise function or some absolute value function in the harder problems. But most of the time we have these two rules. So the first rule is the following. In rational functions, which is the example we had above, polynomial over polynomial, holes, so if you have a hole in the graph, and we'll talk about that in a minute, holes are removable. It's a lot of knowledge here. And VAs, vertical asymptotes, are non-removable. Okay, so in rational functions, holes are removable and VAs are non-removable. So let's do a, a quick example here. I'll make a new one up instead of using the one we just did. So if you have f of x equals x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 7. This is a rational function. It has two discontinuities. One of them is at 3, because if you plug 3 into the bottom, it's undefined. The other discontinuity is negative 7, because if you plug in negative 7 to the bottom, it's also undefined. So these are the discontinuities. You just look to see what makes it undefined on the bottom to find the discontinuities. Uh, and then notice that you cancel this. So we've removed the discontinuity, which you already knew. But this creates a hole. right? This creates a hole. Whenever you have this cancellation, you have a hole at whatever makes this 0. So what makes x minus 3 0? Well, 3. So you have a hole there. So holes are always removable. So this is removable, removable. And here you have a vertical asymptote, right? This is, oops, I messed up here. This is plus 7. Whoops. Here you have a vertical asymptote, right? And vertical asymptotes are always not removable, so not removable. So we kind of already knew this uh, intuitively because we talked about how the canceling uh, is the removal process, right? So even if you didn't know this, you, you kind of already knew it. Just writing it down a different way. Two, in general, VAs are going to be non-removable. So VAs are non-removable in general. So this specifically also applies to like trigonometric functions. So if you have a trig function and you have a vertical asymptote, uh, it's going to be uh, non-removable. I think that's good. Uh, this video is getting kind of long. In the videos that follow, you'll see examples of uh, using this definition here, right? You'll see this. You'll see examples of trig functions, and you'll see more examples with rational functions as well. So you'll see lots of examples of removable and non-removable. And hopefully what you get out of this is the following. It's the intuition, right? We've removed the discontinuity via the cancellation process, and then we can't remove this one. So that's it.